okay so you just saw the video there are a couple of such interesting videos i think you will you, have, you might have got some idea about uh, you know certain things uh, so all is all these there are five exe files which you can install on windows machines and you can run through this not more than 5 10 minutes each okay so you will get some good understanding and also there is uh, there i mean so two of the videos i have also posted on the in the lecture folder so you can watch it anyway so so we were looking at this uh, uh, secret of life and uh, bio operations so i think we have covered some history uh, it's not the entire history by the way there is a history timeline video also available you know you can watch sequentially what has happened in biology okay so we were talking about uh, story of ships in fact bacteria right so why bacteria are so important i think uh, some of you might be knowing that with bacteria you can create bulb right so a bulb which will glow in the night this work has already been done you know so you require person like a steep job so the technology is in the lab you convert into the commercial market right those kind of challenges are also important so they are very beautiful i mean bacteria are really very interesting and beautiful thing for me because you see i mean you should be really thankful to bacteria for multiple things you know for helping us uh, in many ways so we were talking about story of ships because of this bacteria in the ocean so we have this warm current and you know and you know this uh, cold water so difference of uh, warm water and cold water so current these currents were important for the age of discovery why it is called age of discovery for europe to discover uh, many things so for example uh, you know american side or east side you know especially china and india before that uh, you know many many things from here they used to go to europe for example when i was visiting saudi arabia so they when when you say bharat bharat means spices for them okay that is kind of connection so spices means bharat right so so all this uh, interesting things happened because of this uh, root actually you know so one of this uh, famous trip by uh, uh, charles darwin uh, you know so this his ship name was beagle okay so th i mean he has traveled uh, different three you know from 26 to 30 1830 1831 1836 1837 to 1843 so these through these trips he observed huge biodiversity on the planet okay different kind of species uh, animals plants all kind of things and what they used to do while doing this discovery of course a mix of culture you know so they were also mixing with the different cultures and they were collecting samples of different things for example different kind of plants and other things and they were taking it to the ships to the europe right and in fact because of these uh, journeys uh, he got the idea about this famous book which i think you, each of you should read obviously you can get a nice copy origin of a species by means of natural selection it will give you a very good idea about biology you know how sorts i would say it's a first written document with about different variations you know so darwin theory of evolution uh, is very very important in terms of biology right and actually you will see that it is very close to computer science back at those days we were not sure what it is why it is happening but now you can understand these things in the in the terms of computer science okay so this is a very nice book which you should read also there was uh, another important observation was by gregor mendel so mendel job was when these people used to complete the trips and those collection of plants and other things 
and the mental job was to collect them, classify them, make notes of it, and maybe trying to grow those things in Europe. Okay. And while doing these things, actually, he did this experiment, actually, of the, the famous P, P experiment, right? So you can look at this experiments in plant, hybrid, plant hybridization, where actually he first time observed that there is a heredity nature, heredity nature of DNA, right? So, I mean, there is something, especially since DNA, it was not clear at that point, but there is something which goes from one generation to other generation, right? This kind of things is really observed because he observed the, you know, different color combination, right? Which was passing from one plant to the other plant, next plant. So these kind of things, basically, uh, though these observation, observations was done by him in this uh, around 1866, but actually it is Ronald Fisher, uh, who is a famous statistician in UK. I mean, he was. So he has actually shown mathematically or statistically that uh, what is happening there in terms of heredity. You know, so it's a very beautiful work. I have not covered any of those things, but you can actually search for it on the internet. So it's, these are the interesting things. So see, because all this thing is happening because of that bacteria in the ocean, because weather system is there, currents are there, somebody discovered the current, and then they started traveling from one place to the other place on the planet. Now I am going to show you, so we, I call it life 1.0. All these genomes you collect, as you remember from the last lecture, so now people started looking at the genome or the sequence of different species, plants and so on. So you need collection. So that's why there was a, uh, in fact, there are three branches or four branches which has come up. The first is obviously molecular biology. What is molecular biology? Combination of genetics and biochemistry. That is molecular biology, right? The biology that you have studied in your high school, you know, collecting plants and so on in your, you know, books, right? That is not the real biology. This is real biology, right? So biochemistry approach and genetics, right? Second field that has emerged is bioinformatics. What is bioinformatics? When you have all this sequence uh, data, right? Data of proteins, data of, you know, amino acids or data of uh, DNA or RNA, the collection of these genomes and so on, you require a special kind of algorithms to search for something or to store or manage this data. And that has resulted in bioinformatics. Okay, so this branch is known as bioinformatics. Now, there is another uh, branch which is known as computational and molecular biology or computational and systems biology rather. So actually you can uh, do two parts of it. One is computational biology, another one is systems biology. What is computational biology? Suppose so computational biology is basically you are trying to develop algorithms to understand something. For example, when we are reading the genome, what we do? We decompose into small, small pieces, amplify it, and then the reconstruction of that pieces, when you read it, you again reconstruct to give you the whole genome. It involves a lot of algorithms based on graph theory. Okay. So, there, you know, actually those kind of algorithms comes into picture. So people study different kind of algorithms for doing various biology, right? So that comes in computational biology, okay? That is one branch. You can also do a lot of wonders. For example, I remember Eric Lander once, I think that video you can also find somewhere on the internet. And he mentioned that first time there was a specific kinds of kind of cancer which was observed clinically in the lab, right? Just by looking at the genome, the team of Eric Lander was able to predict more cancers, you know, in the patients. And then when the doctor uh, did the experiments and then they, then they found that, yes, that is confirmed. So basically what I'm saying that just with the help of compression approaches, you are able to predict many diseases. This is a very powerful tool, actually, really to understand, uh, you know, biology or, you know, to say more about the patients. Also... People realize that, as I mentioned in the, in the last lecture, just because of deletion of three letters of ACGT, uh, you get cystic fibrosis gene. Uh, so, so you get cystic, cystic fibrosis uh, disease uh, when these three letters are deleted from chromosome number seven in the human genome, right? So these kind of connections and so on <coughs> are very, very common. In fact, 
as you know, in US there is a company 23andMe. Have you heard of 23andMe? No? So 23andMe, you know, is owned by, uh, the founder was uh, the wife of uh, Saljeet Bin, I guess, yeah. Saljeet Bin, the founder of Google, right? So she started this company. So the job was to collect the genomes and then, you know, basically uh, try to predict two things. First, your ancestor route. So there are a couple of other companies which are doing this job, right? You submit your genome and then they will tell, okay, this guy is related to that guy on the planet through genome path, right? Because all these genomes are evolving as per the Darwin theory, right? So you can do those kind of connections. You can make a software tool which can do all these things, right? So that is one thing. Second thing is that, uh, you know, you can also tell in advance what kind of diseases are possible, which is due to, you know, uh, you know your ancestors, you know, what kind of diseases are possible, you know? That kind of thing. For example, if I should say it's a very simple example I'll give you. Suppose you are smoking, right? So if you are smoking, what will happen? Some people say that I am smoking, but I'm not getting any disease. You know, it's fine with me, right? So what, what happens when you smoke, methylation frequency on your epigenome. So on the, uh, you know, there is a genome which is ACGT and there is an epigenome. So there are other, certain other uh, uh, portions on the genome. So basically, methylation frequency increases. So it is hypermethylation uh, occurs. Now that is recorded. So this is something close to I like is by comparing it with Gita philosophy, right? Uh, that uh, whatever you are doing, right, it is recorded. Now this goes to your future, next generation. Right? So smoking is done by you. All those karmas are recorded and pass, you know, they go to the next generation or next to next generation. So maybe third generation or fourth generation, someone who is not at all smoking will get cancer. Okay. So see, this is the, how things are passed, you know, and people started looking at uh, this uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, branch. Now it's a well studied branch is known as epigenetics or epigenome. Okay. So epigenetics or epigenome is very, very interesting thing. So you, I gave you just one example that millions of things now people are doing here. Right. So it's really, so basically when you are interacting with the environment, environment is giving you some signatures on the, on your genome, right? And which goes to the next generation. So that's why you see uh, different kind of things. So someone who is businessman, so normally you see the Marwadi people in this uh, Rajasthan, right? So they're all good businessmen because this is natural, right? For them. So that's why I think maybe you can classify, right? People according to your whatever your ancestors are doing. So okay, somebody in the family is doing this, so more nicely. I mean, of course, there may be exceptions. I'm not denying it, but you know, more likely, you know, they will excel in the, in that particular field, right? So that is uh, connected to biology. Now, <clears throat> so another area is systems biology. I told, I told you about computational biology and uh, where, what we do, we look at the algorithms for doing different things. Then there is systems biology where we look at the whole uh, organism as it in a totality. For example, we can look at all the proteins, right? And then we try to in connect with them, you know, so one protein, how it is connected to the other protein and so on and so forth. And that results in the proteome, you know, now a lot of people are, so as I mentioned, so there's a human protein atlas uh, website where you can find how many proteins humans are having and how they are connected. So there are, you can do different kind of classification of the proteins, right? Uh, each protein has a different biological task. <clears throat> so, that is system biology, system level approach. So, you, you try to model things, right? Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, modeling uh, uh, is specific. Now, this modeling also can be done with the help of differential equations, which is a very common tool. Or you can also use complex networks. The proteins forms a big network. Uh, you know that there is a one, one class going on complex networks, which is very, very relevant here, you know. Uh, that is one aspect. So that is computational biology and the system biology. Then there is a, another interesting field is known as synthetic biology. Synthetic biology means you can program the biology. You want a baby with high IQ, you can do that by programming, right? Or, you know, so you can modify, you want four years, so you can do that by programming. People have done wonderful things. I, I think in, in this, in these slides, I don't have those slides, but otherwise, you know, uh, you can observe that uh, there are people who have grown 
human ear on the back of mouse you know so they have done those kind of things so basically you can do these things so essentially it requires programming obviously because and the data is there right so data is there you do the programming and then do wonderful things right design wonderful things of course there are some uh, regulations right uh, uh, you know like whether you want to do more and more experiments on humans it may be a difficult thing but you know you can do things are practically possible i mean the only thing is that the human genome for example you know is uh, as i mentioned it's about 3 billion base pair 3 to 10 to 10 to the power 8 but out of that only 2% uh, uh, is the protein coding genome you will be surprised another 2% is the genome of viruses which are doing infection to us all all the time okay so all the whenever they viral there is a viral infection that genome is copied inside our genome okay so that is also a very interesting thing so basically you know because all these retroviruses so retroviruses means their genome is made of rna so rna makes so rna will come inside the body right and then the rna will be converted into uh, dna and then the dna is inserted into your own dna right so uh, plug in and then once it is inside the, our dna then you can make copies easily so that is the whole process of uh, retroviruses i will show you a slide here how this thing happens in uh, hiv case and i think i have <coughs> also i am going to give links which you, where you can see the actual video how these things are happening okay so this is all about so synthetic biology you know there is another very interesting area or a, another very interesting discovery i think this is uh, people are people have said that this is the most disruptive thing that is ever discovered by humans and that is crispr crispr i think is the most disruptive technology i would say among all so crispr uh, you know you can actually edit these genes easily with the crispr so you know so you can insert a new gene or maybe delete a function of gene or so you can switch on a gene or switch off a gene at different point so you know you can you know there are people who have done experiments not with crispr but other methodologies of uh, modifying the genes for example there was uh, a patient who was not able to see because there was a lot of uh, concentration of a specific protein inside the eyes so what they have they have gone there and switched off the genes which were producing that protein and so she started uh, you know uh, observing things again right so what i'm saying that this is the way things are possible people are doing different experiments and there are unlimited opportunities for you to actually look at in fact crispr is also involved in data storage you know probably on one one in one class i will talk about it how these things are happening and crispr is also accidental discovery actually see the beauty beauty of all these things are accidental so when you have good intention trying to do something you are trying to do something some beautiful thing another beautiful thing will emerge and you know that is how things are right i think jennifer dandua got the nobel prize for this i think two years back or so about uh, you know discovery of the crispr you can find about the you know oh, there is a lot of literature especially videos about the discovery of crispr and of course there is controversies whenever there is some important thing people say that i have discovered i have discovered and those kind of controversies will be there right anyway so that uh, that is all about this so basically now i am going to show you so so you got these important branches right computational biology what is computational biology systems biology what is systems biology or computational systems biology right synthetic biology in fact we have offered a course uh, on synthetic biology here twice so that is also there we have also offered a course on computational system biology here that is also there we have also offered a course on bioinformatics by the way these they, these days yes Uh, how can we switch off something which is connected to a gene or a DNA or permanent switch off? How is it possible? Yeah, so there are method methodologies. How do we do that? How will you switch off the gene? For example, what happens? I'll I'll, I'll explain to you the uh, central dogma. Uh, okay. So what happens whenever a, the function of gene is to make a protein, right? So when you read certain portion of DNA, from DNA you make RNA, which is known as messenger RNA. From RNA it goes to protein formation. using genetic code if you stop this process in between so the particular protein will not be formed right okay so you can <clears throat> so for example there are you can have some sort of uh, you know molecule which will absorb that rna okay 
then the next step will not take take place. Okay, I will explain to you the central dogma, then you can understand it better. Okay, so. <coughs> So let me show you, uh, okay, so how many bacterial humans, I think this is an old slide, up till 2014 we, we, have, we have sequenced these many bacterial genomes. Now you see this data is in front of you is a gold mine for business. So for example you see there are, you know Anu Acharya, she is uh, co-founder, I mean founder of one company, uh, Genome Patri. So what they do is, you know, in marriage, you make Janam Patri, right? So she's matching Genome Patri. So that before marriage, you can actually see, you know, to decide, I mean, that whether you should marry or not, because, you know, whether what are the chances of getting disease in the child, right? You can minimize those, those chances, right? So this is a beautiful business, right? I mean, if you want to test right now, you can go to this website. She is in Hyderabad. I mean, that you can find Genome Patri. Send your... DNA, <laughs> DNA you can, you know, from your saliva or anything or maybe blood sample or whatever, you send it to, and they will give you the data. And of course they will, so if both the person, you know, boy and girl should send it and then they will test and they can say that, you know, this is a good match or bad match, right? So that they are doing right now. So you, it's a very good business, right? So plenty of business opportunities here. People also started finding the tree of life, you know, all these different uh, genomes, and then you try to find relationship. There is a one popular software, Mega, written by Sudhir Kumar at Arizona State University. So where you can actually do this, understand this, so you have the genomic data, and try to find the relationship among different uh, strands, you know. Uh, so that's interesting thing. There are many people. So now you see, there are challenges, for example, if the data is very huge, the complexity will be more, so you know, how to design efficient algorithms for handling the data and so on. That is a computer science challenge, right, ultimately. This is the evolution of gene families in Asian, you know, uh, from the beginning. Now, <coughs> this is a very nice book, if you want to, it's a very small book. If you want to understand computational genomics, and uh, I'll show you now the basically a demo at NCBI website, you know, NIH, National Institute of Health. These numbers are nothing but XSN numbers, just like each book has an XSN number. So whenever you sequence any genome, you assign an XSN number and it's stored into the data. So you can search using this XSN number in the database. So let me show you. Okay, so we go to here, NCBI website. Okay, there's all kind of data is available here. I'm going to show you nucleotides, and I'm going to give the access number here, <coughs> right? NC underscore 001802, search for it. This is the complete genome of HIV virus, right? There are two versions, FASTA file format and uh, gene bank format. So FASTA file format is pretty easy. This is the FASTA file format for doing all the analysis on, the, on this genome, right? So basically you have this FASTA file, it is a first line is a kind of uh, header and after that the whole data is there. This is 9000, around 9182 or something size. But each HIV virus has, will have a different size, almost similar, close to 9,000, okay? <clears throat> so this is a software for making a deadly HIV virus, only 9,000 bits, right? See the powerful thing. Now, so if you go to the gene bank format, you can see that 
you know, complete when the sample was collected and so on, all those details. And also it has this kind of thing right here. As you can see that this portion here is protein, okay, per gene. So this is gag pole gene. So in HIV virus, the size of HIV virus is around 9000 uh, uh, ACGT. And out of that, we have around nine genes, only nine genes. And it makes approximately 45 to 50 proteins. And all these, all this machinery is enough to make you really sick. Okay. So HIV virus, once there is infection inside your body, it will try to replicate. Normally what happens, why HIV is more deadly? Because in our human body, there are two special kind of cells, T cells and B cells, which actually constitute the immune system. They are part of immune system. <clears throat> and HIV virus actually infects T cell. So when you are actually infecting the machine, right? I mean that the corp, you know, right? So then what will happen? You know, there will be a problem, right? So your response, uh, immune response will be slow towards the uh, infection and more complex things will happen. By the way, see the beauty and beauty of biology. There are few people who will never get sick because of HIV. Can anyone tell me why? No matter how much infection you give. <coughs> huh? Huh? After the infection, the immune system is ready in till that state that it can counter it. No, no, I'm saying it's not about infection. You, there are some people on this planet, you, and you know, you infect that person with say HIV virus injection, then also they will not get infection. That is where the beauty of biology lies, right? So what happens when I, I will show you again, the video is there. Maybe you can watch uh, whenever HIV virus enters inside our body, it is trying to find a receptor. The receptor is made of a protein on the wall, you know, on the whole structure of the HIV virus at so the top, there is a structure of made of protein. HIV virus will try to attack that receptor. Some people don't have that receptor on T cell. So they will never get an infect, infection, right? So now you see as an engineer, so if you want to really create, uh, you know, save someone with something, right? So you create T cells, which are having no such thing, right? And still the body is functioning fine, right? Who changes at what places? It's really complicated. So you have plenty of things to really understand and uh, these things, right? So, this is all about HIV. I, I'm sure you can, you can actually plug in these sequence, these numbers and you can see yourself at NCBI website, right? What is happening there now, actually, uh, so this is again a picture of, uh, major events in the, in the biology. Now I'm going to tell you something about central dogma. So actually the entire biology, if you really want to understand biology, there is only one thing you need to understand and that is central dogma of biology. What is central dogma? It says that information is there in DNA from DNA. You, you get messenger RNA. So this information is passed into the RNA molecule. DNA molecule converts into an RNA molecule. DNA is a double strand helical structure from that you get RNA molecule, which is messenger RNA from RNA using a map, which is a genetic or purely mathematical business. You get a amino acid sequence and that amino acid sequence will fold into uh, secondary or tertiary structure of a protein. And then the bunch of proteins, uh, they clump together to form a uh, higher structure and for doing the specific biological function. So entire biology moves around this central dogma. This is the very, very central thing, right? <clears throat> I think every day I can give a lecture on central dogma, it will be different. So much information is there. Okay. So first I will give you the top view. Then I will go a little bit more details and then you see more details and more details and so on. Right. So you see what happens from DNA to RNA and RNA to protein. This is the common belief, something around sixties and seventies. After that, 
people discovered there is a double loan of rna that rna you know in making the protein that is one task but there are other tasks it can also act as a catalyst for doing other biological function and this discovery by thomas chef led to a nobel prize a simple observation i mean obviously but it's a very basic understanding so if you can and by the way you should i uh, you should know that most of the great discoveries in biology is done by people who are outside the domain of biology like right? because what happens you know you get different uh, you know perspective about things many physicists have contributed a lot you know and mathematicians also eric lander is a mathematician because of him i would say that the whole things has changed right so now <coughs> so this is a very famous picture so we have inside cell there are genome so there is a chromosome you unwind it there is a double helical dna structure and then there is a you know you can take that so what happens another very interesting thing so it's not that one protein can come from single stretch of genes at one place but it can also come from combination of genes at other places right so what will happen it will eat some portion of dna at one place another portion of dna in another place and then splicing will happen it will merge to bigger rna string and that rna string will produce protein further so you know there are lot kind of variations so essentially this is a ultimate beautiful machine or software i would say your dna is a ultimate software for making you what who you are right <coughs> it can decide about what kind of color of your eye you know what is the size of your ear everything is there right it is inside your genome this is something really interesting <coughs> so mathematically what happens this is in 1968 from dna to rna is converted through a process known as transcription okay and then from uh, rna to protein translation okay. so what is exactly what what is happening here so dna is you see now in mathematically dna is the alphabet acgt right mrna or rna basically acgu okay that is alphabet now you see that if alphabet acgt is sigma dna sigma dna star means computer science in in the language of computer science is strings of all uh, size over uh, you know acgt right so you can take a string here there and then you can actually construct uh, rna <coughs> so sigma rna is acgu and protein is 20 amino acid you know there are 20 amino acids you, you saw that capital k capital l those kind of things right i have shown you in that hiv uh, genome right those are nothing but uh, uh, amino acids and genetic code is a mapping from mrna to amino acids so let me show you what is genetic code it's a beautiful thing actually you see now there are, i mean i can talk about genetic code several lectures because there are so many beautiful things in the genetic code itself you can observe it is a gray code gray code means if you arrange binary bits so you can say this is of length 6 actually you know and then each bit differ at one position so you see that all these these are known as codons u u u and u u c there is only one bit difference right then u u c and u u a there is one bit difference and u u a and u u g is there is one bit difference right so these are arranged in a group so what happens <coughs> so u u c so u u c will be give you the first uh, amino acid phenyl right p h e what is written so u u a is leucine right there are 20 amino acids written all the, these are all two amino acids right v a l m e t and so there are two important things one is uh start codon and stop codon so there are two important things start codon and stop codon so those three are stop codons u a a u a g u g a so whenever you are looking for a uh, protein or gene <clears throat> so there is a start codon there are three bits fixed from where formation of rna starts and it ends at any of these three positions okay that that's what how or the rna uh, rna is produced right so 
so i think i would like to give you as an exercise of course uh, in that uh, exe you can actually watch you know actually you can do the experiments you can do the exercise basically take the string and convert uh, amino acid right uh, by hand you know so you will understand so i would invite you to do that experiment right by the way but otherwise so if there is a string of acgt right so in that string of acgt wherever there is a start codon from there formation of rna will start okay and so wherever there is ends you see take separate out that rna string and then from that rna string is known as mrna because it is taking this is containing message for making protein okay and that that rna is converted into a sequence of amino acid using this table this is known as genetic code right so i think this video is there i mean you just saw that video i showed you to initially uh, you know so observe that video again after reading it so it is showing you how trna molecule is picking three bits uh, of the rna and giving attaching one amino acid uh, you know that process is done by trna okay so this is really interesting thing to observe <coughs> Now let me show you a very specific example of HIV. <coughs> so started in 1933, as I mentioned. So these microbes are uh, eco-friendly, right, to some system. And when they switch the species, they become dangerous. So initially there was SIV. Finally, you know, there was this. Uh, there was one person actually. Uh, one gay man who was, uh, you know, so the first cluster of cases of uh, there are why these two diseases, right? Pneumonia and this uh, uh, sarcoma occurred in a gay man. So what happens when HIV virus infects uh, T cells, basically, right? So the immune system is what happens goes down, right? So if immune system goes down. They, what is known as opportunistic infection happens. There are other diseases that are uh, that may happen because the immune system is down, right? So other viruses which are always attacking inside our body, they will be active, right? And so other diseases uh, will start popping up. Okay, so that was happening to one person, and this guy was actually traveling. I mean, he was a flight attendant. I mean, you, I think on YouTube you can find this beautiful origin of HIV, how it started. So they were able to trace down one single person. You know, who was traveling quite frequently from one place to other place and so on, and he was gay, right? So he spreaded the disease to a lot more places. Okay, uh, happened in 1980, 1981. So then, 1981, actually, they they defined it AIDS. It's still, it's a very deadly thing, right? We don't have a vaccine for HIV yet. Uh, Microsoft tried developing certain vaccine things using machine learning. So there's a lot of role for machine learning also in biology, by the way. Okay, so again, uh, uh, basically they have identified that the, the the disease was because of HIV virus. Okay, uh, so these these people are involved. There are two different groups. I think this you can see uh, HIV life cycle. The HHMI HHMI is Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Have you heard of Howard Hughes? He was a very famous businessman in US. Uh, okay, and. Uh, even he has helped the U.S. government uh, in getting the, I guess, uh, a ship from the ocean. It was really uh, difficult task to do at that one point of time. I think uh, so. Towards his end, uh, uh, towards uh, end of his life, he gave all his uh, wealth to create this institute, Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Very important institute, actually, uh, and a lot of great discoveries are happening here. So this is the structure of HIV. See that. So normally the structure of the virus, you know, so basically the structure of virus is also very beautiful mathematically. It's very optimized uh, structure, right? And it has a lot more connections with group theory. If you, you know, sometime one can talk about a lot about group theory, how that is playing a very important role in the viral formation. Okay. And uh, then these are the RNA molecules and these RNA molecules. Uh, so basically this is the RNA genome, right? And that from RNA genome, so let me show you. So basically, these are the receptors. 
okay they are known as chemokine receptors and they actually attach to the uh, basically so these are the receptor by, by the way uh, they attach you see look at this so sorry cd4 okay so this is the this is the t cell thing you see uh, so core receptor is there on the t cell this is the t cell and this is the genome of the t cell so this blue one is the genome of the t cell and the yellow one is the infection so something that went inside in the host cell by attaching their uh, you know fusion of hiv to the host cell surface then this uh, matrix is released or this is called known as capsid and from there when rna strand is outside basically reverse transcript uh, you know so the viral rna is converted into dna okay because these are known as retroviruses so dna is uh, created and then there is dna is fused here in the actual dna and then lot more uh, replication starts this central dogma process will start to make proteins okay and so that will give you a uh, new viral or you they call it new viral rna and then finally new virus right so mature virion so this is really a nice the video is available you will understand it much better way right so please do watch that video so i as i i just saw shown i have shown you this uh, picture by the way there is a nice book uh, calculating the secrets of life by eric lander by michael s waterman you can read uh, this book i think that's all now probably next time i am going to talk about certain bio operations in more details i'll show you the experiments by the way you can extract your dna if you want to extract your dna how many of you are interested in in looking at your dna so very good you can do it at your hostel what you require rubbing alcohol you know rubbing alcohol not that alcohol i mean that is also fine but rubbing alcohol and uh, which you can get on any medicine shop soap detergent right and uh, the source maybe strawberry is a very rich source i mean you can take strawberry banana or any other th to create uh, your to extract the dna from that or you can take your cheek cheek cell <coughs> okay and it's just a very easy experiment you can see on youtube there are plenty of people who have extracted the dna and you can see the white stuff uh, which you can extract from these things right so you can actually see the dna so you know this is a some simple experiment i would like you to do that right i mean on youtube you can find a video where you can see how to extract the dna then you will get more feeling okay this is the dna we are talking about the data is going to be stored in that kind of dna right fine so thank you so we'll see you in the next class then